you can't pause from? He was not telling Mary, as you look at the text again, when he says, woman, behold thy son, he was not, he's not telling Mary to look at him. That's, that's, that's not what he was saying. Don't, he wasn't saying, behold thy son, like see me up on the cross. Rather, he was referring to John. As I think this, about this, as he hung there, you know, the, the wording is very obvious that he could not point, he could not, whatever, he is saying, behold thy son. Perhaps nodding his head, I don't know. He's referring to the disciple John who Jesus loved. Christ was replacing himself with John because Jesus would no longer be there for Mary to look at, to dote on, to love, to talk to, to be with. Note, he provided for her, for her nurturing love needs. As Jesus hung there, he provided for his mother's nurturing love needs. He says in verse 26, Woman, behold thy son. Mary had been a godly mother who had looked after Jesus since his miraculous birth. You remember she had looked on him since the day that he came from God, the Holy Spirit, as a baby in Bethlehem. She had fled with him as an infant to Egypt to protect him. She had watched him as a toddler in Nazareth. She had seen him increase in wisdom and stature and favor with God and men. She had seen him as a young person in discussion with religious leaders at the temple. She faithfully had initiated and experienced his first miracle. You remember that? She had been faithful, a faithful follower during his years in ministry. She had confessed at his miraculous conception that she needed a Savior, the Magnificent. Do you miss the point where she said she needed the Savior? And now she's, she stared at him who was her Savior, who was becoming her Savior. Your, mo your mother has most likely stood beside you as well. Mary had faithfully stood beside Christ as a mother. But he would not be there to be a son any longer. He was going away. And now he diverted her attention to his loving disciple, John. He told her to see him now as the replacement for Jesus. Joseph, her husband, was likely dead at this point. And her other children, it's not obvious, but evidently those half-siblings were unable to suitably fill the need of provision for their mother. And they certainly could not take the place of loving Mary the way that her son Jesus did. And so he handpicked someone who was known in Scripture as an affectionate, dedicated person, disciple, John. Jesus knew the inner heart need of every woman when he made provision for Mary, his mother. He knew the heart need of every woman to love and to be loved. Mary needed affectionate, loving John, for that reason, as much as the provision of him paying for a place to live or to eat or whatever, Jesus provided a loving son for her. John was the loving disciple. You remember that just a few hours before had leaned upon Jesus' side, his breast, the scripture says. He was an affectionate, a godly, righteous, godly man, uh, an affectionate disciple, though, known as the disciple whom Jesus loved. He was a very, a man that was very much in touch with loving people. John could not replace Mary's firstborn son. I mean, after all, he was the son of God, okay? If anyone knew how to love his mom, it would have been Jesus. But Jesus provided her someone who could appreciate her motherly love and return that love to her. He would not be there for her anymore to follow. He would not be there for her to brag about, to find comfort in. And he gave her John to mother and adopt as a loving son. I say all that to ask you this question. Have you met this need in your mother's life? To love her and to allow her to love you the way she needs to. To love and be loved. She wiped your nose and kissed your tears away. Do you spend the time of nurturing that you should with her? Are you really in such a great hurry to get out from under her doting embrace? You know, it seems to me that there is a point that we come to in life where we want to be independent. Whether that be 18, 19, 20 years old, whatever it be, to some much later than that, 
or we want this independence and we don't want our parents to look back into our lives and we don't want them to express their opinions and we don't want our mother to come and make comments that really is none of her business about my kitchen and my home and whatever. I mean, really, you know, mom, really, this is my, this is my, and there's a place where for leaving your father and mother and cleaving your wife. I don't say, I don't take any of that away. But listen, are you really ready in the grand scheme of things to be so independent that you don't nurture your mother the way that you should. That you're re re ready to push away her doting embrace. You can be 80,000 years old and she will still be your mother. Can you not pause, teenager, and tell her all about your day, loving her and allowing her to love you? Can you not overlook her faults, daughter, and spend time with her anyway? Son, are you sure you want to push away her attention and her involvement and her questions of your life? Are you really, are you really sure you want to do this? In the, in the whole example of Jesus Christ taking time to, to, to love his mother from the cross, are you really sure that's the direction that you want to head? Are you really sure you're so quick to get out from under her control? You, you, you sure you want to head that down that road? Jesus didn't. Note also, please, he provided for her physical well-being in verse number 27. Look at verse 27. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. All right, there's a contrast here. Jesus was providing for up to that point. And then, now John takes him, takes her to his own home. That means provides for her, a place to stay, food, whatever. He was speaking to John the beloved disciple, about taking care of his mother. It's unclear where, as I said, the other half-siblings were, but it is clear that Jesus had taken responsibility of Mary up to this point and made provision for her. And now he was providing for her the rest of her life. Notice the contrast that John was now taking her into his own home, as if, very clearly, though the Son of Man doesn't have a home, Jesus had provided for her. Right? He had handpicked her provider. He chose a disciple that he had special confidence in, a special love for. One of the inner three, Peter, James, and boom, John. And John often reminds us in the Gospels that he was the disciple whom Jesus loved. Scripture says it here. Christ knew he could rely on him to take care of his mother. Well, listen to me. God entrusted you with a mother also. It's not exactly the same, but you were entrusted with a mother. You, 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 we normally look at that the other way. We normally look at that Katrina is entrusted with these children that she has. Okay, it's really, it works the other way too. Especially in the elder years, you were entrusted with a mother. God handpicked your mother for you. Can he trust you to take care of her? Some of you just desire, especially young people here, to leave, to get out from under that mom as soon as possible. Young people, teens, are you all with me here? Are you all with me? You all with me? Be with me. Some of us want to get out from under our mother as soon as possible. And her rules and her standards and her involvement in our lives. Please understand, the Lord gave her to you. She is a great blessing. Don't be foolish. Don't be blind. You do not well by stiff-arming your mother. Verse 20 says, 27 says, From that hour John provided for Mary in his own home. Jesus shows selflessness and great respect for his mother. Even there on the cross, by remembering her, him, her, though he was in great personal agony. I mean, come on. Did he not have a right that this would be about him? Three statements out of the seven, he deals with things about himself. I thirst, etc. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me, etc. Four times he is thinking about others. Others. If there was ever a time where Jesus had a right to think about himself, was it not on that cross? Was it not as he was giving himself for everyone else? But yet, he remembers his mother through personal agony. He shows great respect for his mother also by providing another son for her to show love to and to be loved from him and providing for her nurturing and physical needs in her future. Now here is here is our example how Jesus Christ treated his mother. Here is his personal example of taking responsibility for the well-being of his own mother. 
How can we follow this lead? How can the rubber meet the road? This is all great to look at it. It's the right place to start thinking about how to treat our mothers. But how can we teach our children to treat their mothers responsibly? How can we? Now some of us have blown it for many.